All right, so continuing our look at the system settings, let's go ahead and check the general ones here. Uh, general settings is just kind of uh, some things that don't really fit the other categories uh, specifically. Um, some compositor options. Uh, you can change the VSync method. I've never played with that. Uh, VSync is short for vertical sync. Um, I don't want to go into like the super details of that, but um, if for some reason you needed to change the way that it does it, uh, you can do that here. I've never had to mess with that setting myself. Um, disable compositing for full screen windows. If you need to do that for some reason, you can. It says select this option to let full screen applications skip the compositing manager and run at maximum speed. Unselect if you're experiencing screen tearing in full screen mode. So um, by default, it's off. I just leave it like that. Um, and let's see, miscellaneous options section that says enable timer when logging out or shutting down. Um, so if you want to have a shutdown timer um, appear, you, you can toggle this on and it will let you do that. Uh, but it tells you right here the timer delay in seconds. Um, so you can set that to whatever you prefer um, if you want a delay for that. Um, and then there's some options for uh, the memory limits for uh, Cinnamon desktop environment that it uses. It says the option here, restart Cinnamon when it uses too much memory. And by default that's on um, memory limit and megabytes. So basically, you know, 2048. So it's basically two gigabytes uh, is the most that uh, Cinnamon is allowed to use on this system by default. Um, I think that probably changes based on your system, uh, your memory that's installed on your system, but um, but maybe not. Maybe that's the normal by default the whole time. I'm not too sure. Uh, but it says check frequency in seconds, how often you want it to check to see if it's using too much memory or not, and then if it does, then restart it. Um, I just leave those settings alone and let Linux go ahead and handle that on its own. Um, I haven't had too many issues with you know needing to do that um, so uh, so that's just for the general settings they're just kind of uh, you know miscellaneous stuff that doesn't fit in any of these quite uh, exactly hot corners I'm actually not really even sure what this does I don't ever use hot corners but um, I guess it looks like you can change like from different workspaces um, and I'll talk about those uh, in a little bit I haven't used those extensively either um, but you can uh, change, uh, by default they're all, uh, you know, toggled off and it's not enabled, but if you want to enable the hot corners, you can just check one of these and it will enable that specific corner of the screen, so, and then you can see there, uh, it lets you switch between different workspaces, um, but otherwise uh, you can just, you know, do it a, a manual way and it says show all workspaces or show all windows, show the desktop, or run a command. So you can have those, I guess you can have the different uh, corners when you hover your mouse over them do these different things. Um, and, and there could be a delay set if you would like in uh, milliseconds apparently. Um, but again, I'm not the best to cover like the details of that, but um, but that's what you can do if you, you know, if you want to uh, enable that functionality to a specific corner of your screen or or what have you. Um, the input method here, so this is for if you, um, it says input methods are used to write symbols and characters which are not present on the keyboard. They're useful to write in Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Thai, Vietnamese, etc. So to add support for a particular language, select it in the sidebar and follow the instructions. So they have options for simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Thai, Vietnamese, and I'm not even sure, Telugu? I'm not even sure. Wow, that's <laughs> totally new to me. Uh, but um, so you can, if you do have one of these that you uh, can, you know, if and if you're using like a different, uh, uh, like say your, your default, you know, uh, keyboard layout is, you know, already Japanese or something, then it would probably give you options for, you know, English or whatever as well. Um, uh, but if you do ever want to, like, occasionally or, you know, re even regularly uh, type in one of these languages, this is how you can set that up. So you can actually go in and, you know, it will say, you know, whatever options it says, and you can write hiragana, for example, in Japanese, katakana and kanji, it says follow the steps below. 
Uh, so first you'd have to install the um, necessary packages um, to support the language itself. Um, and this is change the input method framework to whatever FC ITX, whatever that is. Um, and then this is you need to log out and log back in from your user account at least, or you could you know restart the computer if that's easier, whatever you want to do with that. It says right click the applet in the system tray and choose configure and then configuration screen add the mozc input method it says uncheck only show current language if necessary okay and then switch between input methods with control and space so um so yeah the control space hotkey is the uh, the main thing to remember once you set this all up is that you can just hold the control key press the space bar and it will automatically switch between, in this case, say Japanese and English, or you know whatever your default uh, input language is, to whatever ones you have selected here to, uh, you know, that you want to uh, have available to you to be able to type in those kinds of uh, characters and languages and stuff. So, um, and then there's a help section here if you need um, even more. I guess it's just the welcome section there. Um, and it says input method framework up at the top there's a drop down between none and XIM I'm not even sure what the difference is there but um, but that's something you can investigate further if, if it's something that you're interested in um, there is support for it uh, right out of the box here and uh, for some reason that it opened like four instances of it I'm not sure why but um, and then from there let's see languages is pretty um, I'll say similar, I guess. This is probably a related setting, um, but you can change what your default system language is. In my case, it's English, United States, uh, the region where you're at, so that'll change, you know, numbers, currency, addresses, measurements, and stuff like that. You can change that. Um, date and time formats, you can set it to, you know, whatever, you, you, wherever you live, uh, whatever you're used to, whatever you would like. Um, same with the system locale, it says language English, region no locale defined and time format no locale defined so um, so these ones weren't actually set beyond just the language being set to English United States and then if you click this to apply system wide it will apply all these changes uh, across the whole system and then down here it says language support and it says 23 languages installed so um, so if you want to install additional language support that you don't have yet you can do that here install and remove languages um, so that's how you control that. So it's it's a related setting to the input method. This one just says, you know, what languages does your system support, basically, and what languages are currently being displayed. And this one is literally when you want to change how you can type on your keyboard, basically, uh, how you can input the, you know, text and things like that. So If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn even more, you can find my books at bookstoread.com slash Jonathan. That's books, the number two, read.com slash J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N.